Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load your data for structural equation modeling analysis, or actually you can load data this way for anything you want to do in R. And then what are the required packages that we'll be using in a structural equation modeling analysis? Okay. So here, first of all, what I like to do is I like to have a code dedicated to the location of my data file in my computer. So this is what I normally use using the path approach. So here you see, so I am calling my data data. Okay. And then I have the data file in a CSV format. So I call read CSV. Okay. And then this is the location where I have the data file listed. So in the end, you have to have the name of the file with CSV. Okay. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, so here is the path, right? So here is my data. This is the data that I have been using, as you can see, clean data N272. Okay, if you haven't seen how we clean the data, have a look on the video. Okay, you will find the link below and also on the top in the card. And here, this is a CSV format, comma delimited format. So I normally prefer to use CSV format data when I do some analysis. So to get the path of this data file, I will just click here and I will copy it. Okay. I will just press control C or you can just right click and copy. Okay. And then you come here. So I'm just redoing it. So you, you see, I will just write data then this smaller symbol and this one you can also use equal to both gives the same thing just to show you you know and then the common to read is dot read dot csv and then we have to start these brackets and then i paste it so you see i have my file here right the path of day two folder okay so here yeah on day two folder i have this file but I also have to notify the exact file name. So I will just copy this clean N272. I will just copy this and then I will come here and I will use this symbol slash then control V press this dot CSV. So now you see this is very similar to what we have in our format there, right? But one more thing is that in R when you define the path, you must have this symbol as a slash, not like this. Okay. So then I have to replace all of them to like this. So you have to make sure that the exact path is in quotation and the slashes are like slash. Okay. So you have to make sure that, and then here you can use this arrow type or equal to both gives the same thing. So if I now click it, you will see I have this data file here, 272 observation and 62 variables. Nice. We can see up to 50, but we can click here to see all of them. Okay. Until the end. So here we see this. So now we can actually delete this and just run the previous one. So before deleting this, I'm going to show you just running the previous one. I click this one and you see our data is loaded, but I suddenly noticed something interesting. So here it was 62. Now it is 54. Okay. You see when I run this one, it is 62. When I run this one, it is 54. And when I look into the length of the codes, they look same, same, same. But here suddenly after day two, you see it is smaller one. The new one I have written is smaller one. This is a bit bigger one. The previous one, the code I have already have there. I already have had there is a bit bigger one right and we see that actually after day two i had another folder data cleaning then clean data okay so okay so now i see that now i actually use this data file but in the previous code i was using this data file in this file i have fewer variables compared to this one here i have 62 here i have 54 but the main variables are same. So I think it's, it's not a problem actually, which one am I using? And the number of observations are also same. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this one. Okay. So this is one approach where we can 
extract the data file uh, using the path. But another approach could be, so just to show you, I'm going to create an Excel file. If you have Excel file, you can still actually use that in R. So I'm going to show you how that would work. So for that, I'm creating an Excel version of this one. So I'm just going to click save as, and then I'm going to use here Excel F and then here as Excel workbook. And then I just save it there. Okay. So this one, so now I'm going to show you how I can load that one here also. Okay. But this one I will show you without using any chords or anything from here. So we can go here, import data set, okay? And you see, you can actually export it from few formats, including SPSS, Stata, and SAS. But now I'm going to use Excel. Here, you can again, just paste the file location or file path, or you can browse. So now let's say I'm going to browse, okay? So I go to day two, and here is my Excel format. And I'm going to load it here, okay? So it's retrieving the data. So this is the same data file that I have been talking about. Okay, nice. And as you see, most of my course are written as data. So in future course, in the, in the later course, I use the data to refer to the data file. I should have the name of this file also data. So I'm just going to replace here the name of the file to data. Okay, and then I can import already, okay. So import. So you see, I have this file again imported, which is 272 observation and 62 variables. Okay, and again, if I want to see the last part of it, I will just click here and I will go here and see it. So that's how you can also import a Excel file. But again, you can also do the browsing and import a CSV file. For that, we can activate this command. So before any command in R, we, if when we put hash, then that command is deactivated. But to activate it, we can just remove the hash. So now this command is activated. And I can click here and a new window will pop up here. Okay, so here now I can locate my data file location. So let's say here I have my data file and I'm going to select this file. And as before this code, we use the data and we use this command, we already defined is that data. So whatever CSV file we will import, it will be denoted as a data file. The name of the file will be data. Some people say that you should never name a file with the name of data. Okay, but so you can actually give any name you want. You can call it data M, you can call it data SEM, whatever you want to call. But now I'm going to just open it. And this is again, imported here. So here the command is that, okay, it will be CSV file and it will choose from the browsing and the first row, the first, first, first row of the CSV file is header. Okay, so to define to that, we call it true. So the first row is the variable name. So that's what we are saying here with this command header true. Okay, but just to show you, you can actually give any name here. So let's say I give my name. Okay, and then this will be the file name of the file. So if I'm clicking run, and again, I'm going to choose the location of the, uh, I'm going to choose the file from my computer. So here is the file. And when I will open it, you will see, we will have it data, but there will be another one called Munim. Because now before we had the same name, that's why it was replacing, but now we have a different name. So it will create two data files. Okay, open. You see, so now we have now two data files but both are same as we can see here. So what I wanted to say is that you can give any name you want. You can give any name you want. But if you are using these scripts that I have prepared, then you have to change, if you change, if you give a new name to the data, then you should replace all these data names, all these data with the new name. And for instance, let's say now we are going to use only Munim and no more data, okay? so. Then what we will do, I will click Control F and here I will say data and I will now replace it with the name Munim. It must be a whole match, match case. So 
we have to say like whole word because otherwise, you know, like here also part of it has data. It will replace there also Munim file. We don't want that. We want only the whole data to be replaced. Okay. So yeah, like that. So we can check. And now when you want to do it, you can just click replace all and then all of them will be replaced. Okay. So that's how you see the name. Yeah. Now we have another problem here. Like, in some commands, it should have been data. This command here, we must use data to refer to data, actually. So that is one reason why we should not maybe name the data file as data, okay? But anyway, here you will see that uh, it, it kind of works okay. So normally here, I was having the command data equals to data. That's why it is replaced as munim equal to munim. But anyway, so I hope you understand the logic of it, how it works. Okay, so I'm just uh, getting back to the previous co previous codes. Okay.